Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover the M1 Finance Dividend Portfolio Recap for the 21st to the 25th of March 2022. We're going to go ahead and hit five different areas. Number one, the overall performance of the portfolio. What stocks were up, what stocks are down as far as our best performers and worst performers. Number two, what is the weekly performance in comparison to the main indexes? What are our top three winners, our top three losers for this past week? We're going to go into number three. What was the activity like? What did we buy? What did we sell? What dividends rolled into our portfolio? And then with the dividends that rolled in, with the capital that we added last week and we and the companies that we purchased, we're going to go ahead and update our dividend tracker to kind of showcase what our current portfolio dividend is and also how you guys can track your own portfolio's dividend income as well. And number five, what stocks are we buying? So we'll go ahead and take a look at where everything is currently at, if there's any new opportunities that were presented this past week, and just kind of continue to add money into the market and dollar cost average. And of course, if you guys are brand new here to the channel, definitely go down below, hit the gray button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video, hit that all, and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions at any time in the video, go ahead and drop Drop them in the comment section down below. It doesn't matter if you have one question, multiple questions, you know, make a comment for every question that you may have. So starting off at number one, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the M1 Finance portfolio. Now, right now we're looking at the overall performance of the portfolio. So we're back nearing all time highs right here. We can see that our total market gain, this is how much we started at zero. This portfolio was created just a few years ago, about four years ago, on January 8th, 2018. This, this is a Roth IRA. It had zero capital in it. Every week, we've been adding money in it. And every week, we add $115.38 currently. And over the course of 52 weeks, that maxes out the $6,000 threshold for the Roth IRA. So we started this and have every year max out the account to be now up roughly $8,540.88 in capital gains and $3,059.12 in total earned dividends. So get, that gives us a total gains of $11,600 within the last four years. So I think that's pretty reasonable returns for a dividend, you know, dividend centered style portfolio. And this is the only portfolio where we kind of really focus just on individual holdings. The majority of my other portfolios, my you know my Roth 401k, my own Roth IRA, my IRA, my taxable account, my our Fidelity accounts, they're more focused on ETFs, and we own uh, you know we own VTI, the SPY or VU, just kind of depending on the capital that we have available within those portfolios. And what is the best opportunity for that capital to kind of hold on to the most amount of shares of those ETFs? So that's kind of how this portfolio is set up. Now, looking at the performance, or I guess we already covered the performance, but the top three winners, Apple remains number one. It's really hard to beat out Apple in this time frame. It's up 348% in the time that we've been invested in this position. Avi is in second place. We saw that one, I believe, in second place last week at one up uh, about a 125% or so. Main Street Capital returns back to third slot. It's now up 118%. Pfizer pulled back here. We can see Pfizer down in the fifth slot at 113. So we did have a bit of a pullback continue in Pfizer. It looks like Lockheed Martin looks to have pulled ahead slightly up 115. So those are our top five right there all doing really, really well. Our worst performers continue to be Clorox. It's really tough for this one to kind of bounce back. They had such high, uh, you know, amount, you know, the, the, I'm not sure how, you know, the wording of this, but back in 2020, when the whole uh, sickness kind of got spread and got started, everyone flocked to the stores to buy disinfectant, uh, you know, the wipes and all sorts of the Clorox spray. And that highly skewed their numbers. And they have been have had a bit of a pullback and i thought they were at a good opportunity i'm going to continue to hold this is showing down 50 percent. this is incorrect it's down roughly 25 percent and we put two thousand dollars into it it's down 25 percent of the amount so it's it's actually we can go into the holdings here and this shows the true value of that position so we can see Clorox is down 27%. So all in all, 
not too bad there in the portfolio overall. Our second worst performance is Colgate. No biggie there, down 5.29. Starbucks here, this is one that we've been adding into our portfolio and slowly, slowly kind of building it up. We liquidated UGI, a utility company here recently, and took that amount and reinvested it into Starbucks. And we have uh, Stanley Black & Decker. This is only up 4.59. I think a few of these, as we kind of saw here within the holdings, are only up due to dividends that we've paid out. So Stanley Black & Decker is positive on the main portfolio because of the dividends that it has paid out. So Stanley Black & Decker, while it's down $20.53, has paid back shareholders, you know me, over $20.53 to have it net positive. Starbucks is down by one83 Overall, Digital Realty Trust is a REIT that's down 1.8%, but they've also paid several dividends to us. I don't think it shows it within here how much we've actually earned in dividends from this company. Doesn't look like it. So interesting, interesting there. So that's one of our, our top winners and losers for the overall performance now jumping into the weekly performance of the portfolio our weekly performance is up 0.8 percent now i'm not sure how this portfolio did in comparison to some of the other indexes because when i go over to my general area here where i look at the comparison of how much the s p 500 it looks like it's missing some data for monday and it doesn't actually show the five day charts so even if i swapped us to a month i can see this is up 5.93 and I can go over here to the one month on mine, and this is up 1.93, so I'm not sure how the skewed is, you know, how skewed it is. My portfolio really didn't fall as much as the S&P 500 and the other indexes during the, you know, the, the whole quarter here. We can see that at the top of the quarter, we had 43,275 at a high. We can see that we did dip a little bit. We lost about, what, $2,000 and some change during this little dip from january through march and the market has you know almost recovered back all-time highs and our our um history how much have we actually deposited so far this year we've added a thousand so all in all i don't think we're a whole lot to the negative uh where we started on the year and where we're currently at you know if that's if that's a thing uh, so I think we're down just a couple percentages probably off our all-time highs, like $1,000, so probably less than, let's see here, that would be about maybe 2% potentially off our all-time highs. So that's where we are off, off our highs. And our best performance for this past week were Apple. Check out Apple, 6.55%. I think this is my biggest holding. No, it's not. It is in this portfolio. But in my other portfolio, I think I actually own more Apple, uh, more Facebook than Apple. I know I own more Apple in another portfolio, but I actually ended up buying quite a bit of Facebook as well during the plunge. But I'm still negative a bit there as well. Uh, Lockheed Martin up 6.45, Siggy up 4.85, Colgate up 3.57. So those are our top four winners of this past week. Our worst losers here, Lowe's, look at that, now down 9.65% on the week. Stanley Black & Decker continuing to fall there, 8.52%. This is on a negative trend right here, IIPR down 3.21, Pfizer down 3.17, Starbucks down 1.8. So a bit of a flop within these few years. Lowe's could be kind of an interesting one. I'm not sure if there's any opportunity for a few of those positions that were in the negative this past week. I'll go ahead and throw a couple of these. Now we'll look at Pfizer and Stanley Black and Decker as well. I think those are kind of interesting to take a look at as well. So I'll kind of throw them in there. And there's really not a whole lot else I'm too interested in adding at the moment. So those are our weekly performers and we're only up about 0.8%. Now, as far as number three, the weekly activity. Now our week started on the 21st, right? Whoops, I clicked on the wrong button. Uh, so our, our week, started on the 21st so if we go over to the 21st that was when we purchased and we sold so we sold 250 dollars out of avi at 160 dollars now avi did actually move up higher though on the week i believe i think i saw it as one of the better performers so we sold out of it at 160 but it's up at 161.33 i feel like it's it's continuing to be extended obviously check out this performance here over the 
basically end of 2021 until now. I think that's highly, highly <laughs> um, extended. And you can see th these periods here back in 2018 where it extended way beyond where it should have been and it snapped back all the way down to that 200 day moving average. And that's where it sort of trends along. It generally trends within the 50 day, 200 day moving average. And you can see there are instances where it does pop above that 50 day moving average, but then it snaps back very quickly and sharply. And this was actually 2020. That was that recession that we had right there. But for the most part, I, I'm thinking that this will snap back and it will not have any sort of support about the 120s, right? So you're, I'm looking at a potential $40 loss uh, per share on Avi when it does snap back. When it does happen, it'll just pull back and pull back pretty quickly. You know, stocks take a bit to go up, but when they go back, they, they drop pretty quick. So that's that's my, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna obviously sell everything. I only took a little bit profits there, $250 within a Roth IRA. Don't have to worry about it, any taxes. UGI here. I sold out of that at 35.65. I think that was positive on the week as well when I looked at it. So 35, yeah, 35.80, 80 right there. So no biggie, 35.80. I sold it at 35.65. So really hasn't gone anywhere over the past week. I'm just kind of happy to be out of that sector and all that little information there. So that's what we sold and what we purchased was Starbucks. You know, we purchased Starbucks at 88.78. Starbucks is now at 87.45. So it's not, you know, it's been on a little bit of a pullback trend, but I'm sort of, it's consolidating in here, right? I'm not seeing any more downwards motion here within this last few periods here. You can kind of see it did drop a little bit below 80, but it's been kind of sustaining within this period here. And as it stays within this area and kind of trends uh, to the right more, we'll see the 200 day, 50 day moving average kind of trend down lower, and that'll give it some more upwards momentum so when it does close above the 50-day moving average that will be acting as support and move higher just with the um uh you know the the motions of the graphs and such uh then we had some dividends we only made four dollars and 52 cents in dividends this past week we completely removed the pie ugi from the portfolio so anytime you remove a pie it automatically um, sells 100% out of it, and then you don't get a choice option on where it reinvests. So, oh, we did receive another dividend right there. Lockheed Martin, $17.60. Uh, so Lockheed Martin got sold out, $17, or er, paid out a dividend. Whoops, that's command prompt. I don't need command prompt. I want a calculator. I'm so used to raising my command prompt there. Uh, so 452 plus 17 60 is twenty-two dollars and twelve cents on the week. Okay, so now moving on to number four, the current portfolio dividend income. So in order to track your dividends, I use trackyourdividends.com. It is a completely free website. You come in here, you can add an account here manually, give it a name, track it by any sort of currency you'd like. You could update it manually or automatically if you um how, you know, you can link it to your your broker account, but I believe that's a premium feature. So we can see within this account, we have annual income of $1,063. Last week, it was $1,160. And we're going to go ahead and update it once again with what we did, right? And we did make some buys. We did make some sells right here. So in order to do this, I'm going to go to my holdings. Yes, okay, we wanna update three things here. We wanna update Avi, UGI, and Starbucks. So I go to my holdings, and the first thing I wanna do here is remove UGI. So UGI is right here. It, UGI used to pay us out $19.58 per year. It had a dividend yield of 3.77%. So because we did cut it out of our, our position, our portfolio, we can see that these are gonna change. So I'm gonna go ahead and record these what they were prior and then what they're gonna be once we remove it out. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and delete this out of the portfolio, completely remove it out, and we're gonna go ahead and update Starbucks. So we're gonna go ahead and click it. Click it. So uh, Starbucks right now is paying $9.88, and we're gonna go ahead and edit this, go over here, S bucks. We now own 15, 15.15351 shares of Starbucks at 8908 
So 89.08 is how much our cost per share is. And we now own 15 shares. So we increase our shares by quite a bit right there. We just 3X our shares. So our Starbucks went from $9.88 to now paying $29.79. So that's a really big increase right there alone. You know, we did liquidate $20 of dividends from UGI, but we basically move that $20 and then some over to Starbucks right here. And then the other position that we kind of liquidated right was Avi. Our Avi position here did get a little bit adjusted. So let's go ahead and adjust this one as well. So Avi right here, we now only own, let's see here. We went from uh, 8 point, oh, we have 8.18738 right there. And we used to own 9.74 shares. So it went down uh, our shares, obviously, right? We sold that a little bit. Our cost per share is 85.61. Very cheap, right? 85.61. 85.61. And that share price right now is in the, what, 165, 168. So that went from $54 to $46. And now our portfolio should be fully updated. So we're at 42,827, 42,827 and some change. That looks on the dot. So now we can kind of see what was our portfolio dividend income at prior. Our portfolio income had been at 2.72. So it was 2.72. It is now 2.7. Our yield on cost used to be 3.28. It is now 3.23. So that went back slightly because we did lower our overall yield of our portfolio and our annual income did change a little bit from 1 uh, 1,163 to 1,155. So we did lose about $8 of dividends by adjusting our portfolio. We cut out utility, which when we compare these graphs here, here's UGI and here's Starbucks. And we're looking at the performance of these companies over the long term. If you're wanting to invest in this long term, right? Here you have Starbucks in the purple. Here you have UGI Corporation long term. If you're just kind of thinking out loud or just kind of thinking to yourself, which company in the long term has the most potential to not only, you know, right now we're looking at capital gains only, but to return the highest amount of capital back to you. And we can see here that Starbucks, let's just look at 10, 10, uh, 10 year period. Starbucks has returned roughly 212.8% returns over a 10 year period. And it is on a bit of a pullback right here, right? It's not at this 360%. So there's that potential for it to recover in the future, which over time Starbucks, you know, we, we have these periods here where it doesn't do anything. Uh, but, you know, still in comparison to say a utility company that's been on a bit of a downtrend. And then we don't only look at capital gains here. We also look at the dividend total, which one raises their dividend faster, which one raises their dividends longer. And that would be Starbucks. You can see over the past 10 years, once again, Starbucks has raised their dividend by 476%. Whereas UGI has only raised their dividend up 91.67%. So in this whole time frame, my dividend income would have four X in that time frame. So right now, uh, over the 10 year period, Starbucks right now may be paying me out uh, 20, $29.70, but because they're, I don't think I have it in this portfolio already, S box, so I do. Uh, Starbucks does have a yield growth rate right there. So their dividend growth rate over the past five years is 15.87%. And over the last three years, their dividend growth rates 10.86. So, you know, over the, you know, any, any, um, that's a really high increase over say UGI is at 7.75 and 9.89. Uh, UGI has been raising and growing dividends for the past 18 years. And Starbucks has been growing and paying out dividends for the last 11 years. So that's just a little history of UGI and Starbucks. And I think Starbucks is the better bet long term if I were to choose one between the two. And that's what I had to do right there. So we've updated our dividend income. We kind of went over the differences between Starbucks. You know, they're different industries as well. I think I just see more potential with Starbucks over UGI in the long term. So that kind of leads to the fifth topic, right? What stock are we buying this week? And with that, again, 
We did see some opportunity with these ones having a bit of a pullback, not so much in Avi. Abby's flying high in the sky right now. We already took profits a little bit on that one as well. So I'm not going to be removing any more profits out of that one. Uh, I did see Lowe's had a nearly 10% pullback. Let's see, what am I? What do I have in here? Oh, that, that's the difference right there. Let's go ahead and throw our price back in there. We're having our price, 200 day, 50 day moving average. And let's look at the last six months. So here's Lowe's has had a big whopping pullback right here. It's actually broke below its 200 day moving average. So this has done incredible over the past several years. I've owned this for position. Um, I'm not actually sure. It may have been since this portfolio was established back four years ago. And it has been on an amazing run up here. And I can see here there is some support right around this two. Uh, let's go look at the one year. That's going to show us right here. Uh, so right here, this little time frame right here, about 210-ish, I think that's going to show some support. We can see that it has broke below that 200-day moving average, but quickly snapped back and pulled ahead. So this last week, that 10% pullback right there actually pulled it below the 200-day moving average. You know, it broke not only below the 50-day, but below the 200-day. And generally over the long term, you can see that there are very little instances where this company does pull back below the 200-day moving average. And you can see here, there's a bit of a pullback right there between both 50-day, um, 200-day, right there as well. So these little periods here that where it takes place, and that's generally a good opportunity to kind of just add more equity, even if you're already positive on the position. Uh, so let's go look at earnings per share as well. And yeah, there's nothing, no big issue there. Lowe's, everybody goes there. Either going to go Home Depot or Lowe's when you're buying your outdoor style of equipment and projects. Uh, area for outdoors projects. So I don't see any big negative trend with lows in the long term. Starbucks, we've already been kind of buying up more of this one. And I'll probably split it up between lows and Starbucks if I really need to. Stay in the black and tech area. There's really no end in sight in this one. This one could pull back all the way down to, you know, it's broke below any sort of, uh, I guess back in 2019, <laughs> 125, right? But this one, you can see earnings per share already starting the downtrend. So they really need to potentially have some good quarters before investors are going to more than likely kind of pick back into this one. You can see, yes, during 2020 and 2021, they had do, done really well with earnings. Their share price kind of showcased that as well. Their share price followed along with the earnings per share. But, you know, everyone's back to work now. No one's working from home and being able to do their projects while working. So we can see that they're no longer buying those Black and Decker tools and earnings per share is kind of downtrending shows their share price back down to below where it was prior to 2020, even though the earnings per share is higher than it was in that same time frame. So there might be a little bit of an oval, overall over pullback in Stanley Black and Decker, uh, but there's still no support. There's no bounce. There's no uh, climbing over that 50 day moving average yet. So I'm going to hold off on any sort of uh, purchasing there. And I'm not going to be purchasing any Pfizer as well. So I think between Lowe's and Starbucks, I think that's some good opportunity right there. So we're going to head back over to our portfolio. We're going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of Lowe's. So I have 125. That's going to be what, like $75 and some change? $77.62 is how much we're going to be putting into Lowe's and Starbucks. So let's go ahead and put that into lows confirm the buy head back over to our portfolio and look up some starbucks s bucks and go ahead and buy that one as well and let's go ahead and throw the rest of the cash that we have buying power confirm it and there we go so this week we're buying some lows and we're buying some starbucks let me know down in the comment section below what are you buying this week what have you been buying are you continuing to buy into this market i'm not buying like gigantic chunks of individual holdings so i think there's always opportunity out there regardless if the market is going higher going lower there's always opportunity out there don't stop investing and wait because by the time you're done waiting the market will have already recovered so by dollar cost averaging on a weekly basis you can just stay consistent you don't have to worry whether you missed it you 
you got in at the best time because you're constantly investing regardless of whether the market's going up or down. So that is it for this portfolio. If you guys have any comments or questions for me, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you all for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.